Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, October 14, 2019. We are looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What a day out there in the market. It was very, very quiet. The volume was very light and the trading range was very, very narrow. So in terms of the major indices, the S&P, the Dow, the Nasdaq they didn't go anywhere today and there's a couple of reasons for that a it's a bank holiday Columbus Day and the uh, bond market is closed it's also Thanksgiving in Canada happy Thanksgiving to those in Canada it's also Indigenous Peoples Day so there's a lot of holidays going on by the way I'm not sure what happened to the proud American Indian I get the Indigenous Peoples Day if they want to be called that that's fine but I think there's a lot of Indians out there or indigenous people that like to be called proud American Indians. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's my opinion. You can hammer me if you want. It is what it is. Now somebody's going to start in with the Cleveland Indians, the Atlanta Braves, the Washington Redskins, the Florida State Seminoles. I get the point. I think it's a bunch of horse manure. I'm sorry. I have to get off topic today because the volume and the trading range today was so, so bad that I need just a little and just a little bit, but just a little filler. Have no fear. I always have stuff going on. I have charts we can look at. I have stuff to discuss. I have stuff we can learn. I always try and teach something in every single video. Today is going to be no different. Just because the market didn't move doesn't mean we don't have stuff going on. Let's take it from the top. So we had an update on Friday. We talked about all this in the weekend video. You can be short against Friday's high. The high is officially 298.74 a daily close above that high and you have to pitch the position you have to cut and run reevaluate the market at that point in time we are above all the moving averages so we have to note where we are but ironically enough we closed below for now the second day in a row after spiking it the 297 so we know 297 has some meaning in that general area we know it's near the breakdown candle high which was tested was closed below we didn't have a full and complete retracement that's okay we don't have to have a full and complete retracement but keep in mind we can still have a retracement they can still test somewhere up that tail candle high all that being said there's nothing real different from the weekend video so what we can do is move over to a different chart and see if we can pick up any clues any information any data that we can use to our advantage we go right over to the hourly chart and by the way inside the numbers members were told about this this afternoon we're watching a bear flag in process if it continues to the downside where is the target to the downside well you really have two things going on you have the convergence of those moving averages down there around the 50 period and 100 period moving average we'll just call it 293.50 to 293.75 in that general zone but you also have a gap down here the gap is closed at 293.27 so slightly below the moving averages and then of course you have the semi fat round number of 293 just below that so somewhere in that zone would be the target if in fact this bear flag pattern played to the downside it so far is working to the downside it has to get below the low here, which is also below the 20 period moving average on this hourly chart. But the low here is 295.57. You need an hourly close below that number in order to get this thing moving to the downside. Until and unless that happens, where's the risk? The risk is twofold. The risk is getting back above this 200 period moving average that it's riding below. Getting back above that is going to want to suck the market back above 297. And if that happens, you have to start looking at the breakdown candle high. So the whole bear flag thing goes out the window if in fact we start getting above this 200 period moving average. That's number one. Number two, what happens if you wake up to a crazy Tuesday morning surprise or something happens? happens overnight and the market is screaming higher where is the bogey on the upside what happens if is what we need to know if by chance 
The market is gapping above this breakdown candle high. This is, by the way, stuff. This is not what I'm saying is going to happen, but anything could happen, so you have to be pre-prepared for anything. That's what we're doing here. So here's the deal. If, in fact, that happened, you have to get out of the way. You can't be short the market, pitch the position. They could absolutely keep going and even make new highs. There's no telling what could happen? There will be panic buying. It's close to Friday's high, but this is good enough for me. If that's happening, I'm getting out of the way. I'm going to let the market do what it's doing, and I'll get short at somewhere else. Another point, another price, somewhere higher. What's the difference? I'm not interested in a big pie in the face. Remember from the weekend video, I said don't fight the Fed. And here's what I mean. I'm being a little overprotective you never know what's going to happen. You never know what kind of chicanery is going to come out next. You like that word, don't you? I love that word. I'm not sure who wins the battle. Is it chicanery or shenanigans? They're a close neck and neck. We can look at other charts, but for the most part, this is really the rub in the SPY. It's the hourly chart that seems to be telling the story. So you know both sides. You know the north side, you know the south side. Let's move it along. How about a short hop? We're not going to go through the inside the numbers notes. The market didn't go anywhere today. There was nothing going on. Other than stocks on the move. CRWD, TPR, both hit their entry targets. I want to look at both stocks because I think there are lessons to be learned from both those trades. And if you want to see what was going on in the notes section, I'll scroll around and you can pause the video and read it for a few minutes if you'd like. I'll just scroll it here and then you can see the bottom half of the morning notes. And then we'll go up and we'll take a look at some of the other stuff. 10.15 down to 9.35 and then we'll go into the rest of the day, which is basically 1.15 10.55, I think you saw that. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I don't remember. 3 o'clock down to 1.15. You can read for yourself. There just wasn't a lot going on, but this also gives you an idea of even what's being discussed, whether there is or isn't stuff going on. I like being the personal market tour guide. Let's first talk about CRWD. There were two entry points listed in the stocks on the move section the first one was 5517 the second one was 5345 now you'll notice something interesting it looks like the first one really didn't work but that's not really what happened the first one was taken off the table why is that and let's be clear i'm not sending out a message that it's off the table what i'm doing is i'm providing information on trades that are likely to find support at certain areas or resistance at certain areas but you have to utilize everything I teach in order to take the trade it's either give a man a fish he eats for a day teach a man to fish he eats for a lifetime feeds his family and anybody else he wants I'm teaching fishing some of you love it some of you don't to each their own some of you just want the fish well, let's get back to this fish in the course I teach specifically why this trade was off the table by the time it came into 5517 However, that didn't preclude 53.45. Look what happened at 53.45. Now, mind you, the stock was getting a pretty good haircut today. The close yesterday or Friday was $60.25. So down at 53.45, the stock's down 11, 12%, whatever it was at the time. The low of the day was 53.20. Not bad for a rookie. Stock closed the day at 54.51, pretty much a dollar bounce off that level. I know it was late in the day, and I know a lot of traders didn't take this trade, but they did take the TPR trade or the tapestry trade, which was a late addition, but I'm glad a lot of traders, more than I thought was going to happen, but a lot of traders got into this trade. So we have a late addition, and we have it at 2447. It was pretty close to the entry point at that time when I put out the late addition, but yet far enough away where a lot of traders got into the trade. And you'll see it spent a little bit of time down there. It wasn't quite the rocket ride off like we see sometimes. However, 2547, it spent about, you know, 10 minutes down there, maybe a little bit less than that. And by the way, came back to retest it. What was the low of this candle? 2447. Funny how and why that works. The rest is history. 2526 on close off of an entry of 2447, late entry. 
sixth man on the bench. What have we got over in Camp IWM? Well, we have the same thing we had in the Spider today. We had a narrow range, maybe a little bit wider from the uh, look of it than the Spider. I didn't measure it out. Doesn't really make a difference. We still have that fake tail candle down to fill the gap. I believe we discussed that over the weekend. So we'll see what goes on with that. We'll see if that has any meaning. That coincides with the hourly chart bearish pattern that we saw in the SPY. If you think about it, we saw an hourly chart that should play to the downside, and we see a gap fill on a phony gap fill, kind of like fake news, but a fake gap fill on the IWM. So we'll see what happens, but there's another side to the coin. There's always two sides to the equation. I'm the umpire calling balls and strikes. Don't shoot the messenger. When we look at the hourly chart of the IWM, I'm not going to make a federal case out of this, but nevertheless, you have one of these inside of the inside of the inside patterns, right? So you have this down move. You have a failure of the opening range low from the other day. You have the failure of that. So you have a down move and you have a bearish pattern that should work down to fill the gap and then some or not. Either way, it should fill the gap. But if I want to be a stickler and I am the crew chief, it's not such an easy home run in the making. I'm calling a ground rule double. We have one of these bull flag patterns inside of this other stuff. So I can't help but notice it. Why? Because it can certainly do this. Doesn't mean that this is bullish. It just means that we shouldn't be surprised if we see the market trading higher. If we see the market trading higher, we have to go back to remember everything I said before in the SPY, what to watch out for. Again, I'm giving you both sides of the thing. How about the trannies? Anything going on over in the tranny department? By the way, 1990 called, they want their term tranny back. There's nothing going on here. We're trapped inside all these moving averages. It's an inside day to Friday. There's no new information. We'll just move it along. Where are we moving it along to? We're moving it over to the hourly chart. And now again, we have a slightly different picture. We have something even better for the bulls than the last chart we looked at in the IWM. So we have something of a bearish nature in the SPY. We have a bearish nature with a bullish inside of the bearish thing in the IWM. And then all of a sudden the transports We've now closed above this last little, I don't want to call it a breakdown candle high, but we closed above that candle, which means that they might want to fill this gap. If they're going to fill this gap on the hourly chart, what are the other markets doing at the same time? You see why I had to call the ground rule double? And by the way, this could all be meaningless and we could find ourselves to a gap down early on Tuesday. We don't know. I'm just giving you the umpire stuff. Inside the numbers, members will have everything that I have first thing in the morning. BC, before coffee. What about the Silicon Valley folks, the triple Qs? What do we have going on here? I know I took that trend line off the chart over the weekend, but then I decided I shouldn't have taken the trend line off the chart because if we dip back below, we'll have a recapture and we'll have something to talk about and I'll feel like a fool after the fact. So I put it back on before any of that has a chance to happen. So here's what we have. We have the similar situation from the SPY chart. Trading short against Friday's high is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a reasonable trade. I'm in that trade. Any more information on the daily chart? No. The market was flat or the queues were flat today. So we have nothing to report. But when we move over to the hourly chart, what we have is a slight divergence from the other stuff we talked about before. So we have divergences. The markets will undiverge over the next several days, but the cues on the hourly chart look a little bit worse than the spider chart. So the tech space is a little bit worse than the S&P 500, but my two favorite market leading indicators are a little bit better than the S&P 500. So that's what I've got on the table. They're all puzzle pieces. They're mixed around right now. We don't have the clear picture we have some clues, we have some evidence, we continue on. How about the XLF? What do we have cooking over here? We have basically a flat day, but we have a couple of things that are interesting. The daily chart isn't really telling us much. We closed much in the same position as we did on Friday. We're right on top of or below the 20 period moving average. 
However, let's bring up another chart. On this hourly chart, I can't help but notice something similar. It's like a theme. I have an up move here, and then I have a market that looks like it wants to challenge the breakdown candle high. And if that's happening, what's happening around the horn? What's happening around the other markets? That's why I had to call the ground rule double. How about the 120 minute chart? That's a different candle than we've seen or I've seen. I have the 120 minute chart on another screen and I keep looking over there and this is the first time I've seen a reversal candle like this. Now it's in no man's land. They never filled the gap. That doesn't matter. This is a reversal and it's interesting. It's of note. Now all of a sudden you can see here on the 120 minute chart we're putting in a bull flag pattern with a reversal. Does this want to challenge the 100 period moving average, the breakdown candle high? Now, let's call it what it is. We're talking about 15 or 20 cents away. I get it. I'm giving you a lesson. This is a concept. We're seeing divergences. Don't get stuck on the XLF. I should have made that clear in advance. What I'm doing is giving you what's inside my head. What jumps out at the chart the first thing that I see is usually the most important thing to me. And that's why I go over that over and over and over again. It's instincts. Your gut feeling is generally right. Why should trading or charting or analysis be anything different than the rest of our lives? Guess what? It's really not. That's why I call it common sense market analysis. What's doing over at the SMH or the proxy for the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index? Well, guess what? We have the same story. We don't get any information from the daily chart. And when we go over to other charts, we get much of the same story. It's either one side of the coin or the other. We either have a bona fide bearish pattern or we have a bullish pattern inside of a bearish pattern. So this one, we have a bona fide bearish pattern. How about another short hop? I told you I needed a little filler. We're pretty much done with the normal stuff that we cover, so we can talk about something different. I got some questions recently, meaning as recent as today, about the pot stocks. So why not go over the pot stocks? They've fallen out of favor. Nobody cares about them anymore. Nobody's paying attention. So my ears perk up. I'm interested in the pot stocks. Let's start with a longer term chart and we start with one of the fan favorites, at least one of my favorites, which is CGC. It has, I believe, the longest, if not one of the longer histories in terms of charts. So it's easier to chart than some of the other ones. Now this has gotten taken out behind the woodshed, shot a few times. We don't know that it's done or not done on the downside. However, we're into a pretty important area here. We could certainly go lower, but I'm getting somewhere. We're going to look at other charts. So right here, we're into, we're actually below the weekly chart, 200 period moving average. So under garden variety market conditions, they want to fight that for a while. Now they closed on top of it last week. They came up short of it the week before. So they could be going lower, but it looks like today at least, they're trying to fight that urge to go lower. Looks like they're trying to fight back to the 200 period moving average. But mind you, this is a weekly chart and it's Monday. And this candle is the only day that's traded this week. So we have a long way to go, but we can go on. Let's go to a daily chart and we can see it didn't really put in a good enough doji or even a pseudo doji candle. You can make an argument it is, but it's not really a long enough tail candle for me to get interested. So I'm not in love with this yet, but there is something I do want to point out. From a daily chart perspective, check out the volume. Three days in a row, we have volume up in this neck of the wood. So to me, my ears are perking up and I see the capitulation unfolding. Could be more downside, could be finished on the downside. But when I start to see heavier volume day after day after day, and we're at lows on charts, not at highs on charts, I start to get interested. I'm looking for a bottom. I'm looking for a low. Here's another fan favorite, Tilray. I don't see the same type of arrangement on the daily chart in Tilray. And when you go over to the weekly chart, well, that's the monthly. The monthly is ugly. The weekly is ugly. It's melting away. This is one of those things where it had no business being up at, what was this, $300 a share. It's 20 bucks. 
So this is one of those rodeos that really shouldn't have happened. It was a squeeze. It was whatever it was, low float, middle float, short squeeze. I don't really have an idea. I don't really participate in that kind of stuff. Sometimes I wish I did, but in reality, I very few times in my career have I ever caught anything remotely close to anything like this. Generally speaking, in my career, I've usually been on the losing side of stuff like this. So, therefore, over the last 10 or 15 years, I've really stayed away from this stuff. But, it's in an area I'm interested in, it's a category I'm interested in, it's part of that pot stock potpourri, and I would be interested if we could see some kind of a bona fide bottom, but I don't see anything like that right here, right now in Tilray. In fact, I want to bring something else to your attention. There's always two sides to every equation. On Tilray, when you look at the 240 minute chart, what you see is a bear flag pattern in making, which you would see on other charts. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. I always like to show you both sides of the coin. I may be interested in the pot stocks right now, but interested doesn't mean I'm jumping in the water fully naked just yet. Kronos Group is another one that's on my list. So we have maybe a bottom developing in Kronos. So that's a possibility. So you can see, we see a couple of situations based on a couple of different charts that almost look appetizing. So I'm starting to pay attention. This is also one of those situations where, like when we're looking for a top in the market, you don't have to be the first participant to the party. You want to be at the party while everybody's having fun, but you don't have to be the first person there. If you're the first person there, sometimes you have to set stuff up or at least help or pretend to help to set stuff up. The point here is it's going to be a long party when the bottom is found. These stocks are so beaten up. Look at the monthly chart. It's ugly. No signs of a bottom on the monthly chart just yet. But when these things do find a bottom, there's going to be a snapback of a few dollars in a name like Kronos. That's a big percentage snapback. It's not going to happen all at once. It's not going to happen in one day. But at some point, it'll happen. We just have to be in from the right price. Here's another candidate or character on the list, Aurora Canvas. Now, this one's a little different. The chart doesn't look as good. So Tilray and Aurora don't look good. We have another couple that do look good. So you can see it's an area, it's a sector that I'm beginning to zero in again. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not running to load the boat. I'm just watching right now. I'm on the outside looking in as a spectator. And with that, folks, it's a pretty good place to pull the ripcord tonight. So I will do so here. Before I do that, I want to thank each and every one of you. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Without you, these videos are not possible. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.